to Skinner Shorts here on YouTube, our favorite network. Uh, today's going to be a lot of fun, too. Um, something else. You know, the Skinner world is not just Skinner, but there's all these things that revolve around the Skinner world. You know, mostly Southern music, Southern rock. Um, today's episode number... 21. 21. We're now legal age in every state, right, for 21. Black tech, baby. Can you believe it? We can go to Atlantic City. We can buy Jack Daniels. In some states, we can even buy a pot, which is kind of cool. Um, maybe we have. Maybe we haven't. Um, anyway, so the episode today is titled... 38 Special. Can you believe it? 38 Special. You go, oh, 30 Special is not Skinner. It's all about Skinner. I mean, all <laughs> it's about blossomed. Skinner. Everything blossomed. Yeah. I mean, first of all, the Van Zandt household growing up. Can you imagine how it must have been? With, with Ronnie being your older brother, but Ronnie's, what, three, four years older? Two, just a couple years older anyway. But Ronnie's your older brother. He's the toughest guy in town, and he's also a rock and roller, right? He's a singer. He's ambitious. He's got his plans up, and you're the little brother. On um, previous shows, we, we um, went through Lacey Van Zandt's scrapbook. We showed you Donnie Van Zandt, who uh, got in trouble for having long hair, and so he bought a wig to wear to his prom so he could go with short hair wig, which we had a picture of, which was great. Thank you, Lacey <laughs> Van Zandt, the best father ever. Um, but he also, Donnie had a band, right, during those times, called... Um, Collegiates? The Collegiates, you're right. He was in a band called The Collegiates. Not exactly sure who was in that band. We Still know that, Yeah, it was a high school band, but we know that, uh, was it, who was the bass player? Was it Larry? Larry Johnson, I think was The Collegiates. No, is that right? Greg T. Walker. I don't know, man. I don't think he was there. I think the Lions guy was there. I don't know. No, no, I think it doesn't matter. There was, <laughs> so these bass players all interchanged. I mean, because Leon, Leon played with them for a minute, right? Leon was there. Uh, Larry Junstrom was there. Um, I think Greg T. Walker was in that orbit. Maybe, I know he played with, with Skinner some or with Ronnie's band, but... Well, you, you know, know, Larry was the first bassist for Skinner. That's what we think. <laughs> right? That's what we think was Larry Junstrom. Who, but we know that he just he quit because he um, too well, too rough. Yeah, they yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's Ronnie's band. Um, but so Donnie kept and and we just learned recently that Donnie had a band called Alice Marr with Don Barnes. Yeah, and Don Barnes was in it, and this is uh, I guess Billy Powell was hanging around them as well. I don't know if Billy was in the band or this is why Billy is being roadie for Leonard Skinner, but. Anyway, so they keep on having players, and they keep developing. Carlisi is a friend of, of Ronnie's, and they actually wrote some songs together, but he's also in 38 Special. We know that Ronnie had a great respect for Jeff Carlisi, as everybody should, because he's Jeff Carlisi, I think. Um, let's just talk about it a little bit. So the first record, remember that one? Don't lie. Don't lie. You don't remember that one, <laughs> This right? is not... You know, historic. This is this is not and 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 the lineup, as you can see in the back, is uh, Ken Lyons is a bass player at that point. I think that's right. Yeah. So um, none of these songs on here are actually real memorable. Um, I got the record because it's you know it's very special. But um, let's see, Dan Harmon, oh, Larry Bassstrom, Larry Junstrom plays bass on Fly Away. So he's moving into the band. He's sneaking in. He's sneaking in. The first time they came up on my radar was this record. Do you remember this one? Special Delivery. Um, and the song on his that got me on this one was the song called What Can I Do? And it is, I mean, it's a classic. Don Barnes, Donnie Van Zandt collaboration. It, it's fantastic. I don't know. I mean, I actually, on my playlist, 
it's still on there. It's one of the songs that um, comes through, and I always sing to it. Who's the bass player now? So we've made a change in bass player, and here we got Larry Junstrom, right? Larry Junstrom is now in the band. Uh, Billy Powell plays piano on this record on I'm a Fool for You and Take Me Back, which is kind of cool. Um, also, Dale Krantz is uh, doing backing vocals. So this is kind of where a lot of the ideas started. But, so you may not remember that either, okay? <laughs> but I'm going to guess, I'm going to make a wild guess that everybody here remembers this. Do you remember this one, John? I love every song on this album. Yeah, I was going to say, what's your least favorite song? It's no least favorite song on here. They're all great. I mean, the first of all, the album cover is fantastic. <laughs> I mean, I don't know who did the art direction on this, but uh, it is unbelievable. There is a, a note on the back that said, this one's for you, Ronnie, which is makes it all pretty special. Um, recorded in Doraville. Larry Junstrom is back as the bass player, of course. And this is a classic lineup with Donnie, Don Barnes, Jeff Carlisi, Larry Junstrom, Jack Gondron, Grindon, and uh, Steve Brookins. Produced by our favorite Rodney Mills. Rodney Mills. I mean, so song by song, first of all, Rockin' in the Night, again, it's one of the first songs you got Don Barnes and Donnie Van Zandt singing together. It's a classic. Yeah. You hear this very, very often, I think. Yeah. And, and, and then... You jump right into Stone Cold Believer. Wow. You can't beat it. I mean, it just rocks. It just keeps on rocking. This whole album just continues to rock. And, you know, and a lot of these things on here remind me of Ronnie Van Zandt. I mean, when I hear Stone Cold Believer, I'm thinking, well, that's Ronnie Van Zandt, you know? But I have no idea why, was, why Donnie wrote the song like that. You have Take Me Through the Night. And then it comes to a song that I just... I don't know, it hit me in so many ways, Money Honey. Now, it's the first time I'd ever really heard Dale Krantz. She really lays it on this album, this song. Dale Krantz, she can wail. I mean, she blows this song up. And of course, she got uh, Billy Powell on keyboards, on piano. I mean, yeah, Money Honey, unbelievable. The Love That I Lost, kind of a Don Barnes thing. Uh, You're the Captain. Again, talk about something that sounds like Ronnie Van Zandt. Good song. I mean, I love Robin Hood. It's kind of a, a Don Barnes a, uh, instrumental thing. But then we come to You Got the Deal. Again, it's classic Donnie. But then we wind up with probably, I don't know, my favorite 38 special song. There's going to be a lot of those. <laughs> There's a bunch. Turn It On. This is Billy Powell. Donnie Van Zandt, Don Barnes, blowing it up. I mean, they end this record with a song better than they open it with. And Rockin' In Tonight got national airplay. Turn It On, they start opening up concerts with Turn It On. It was that great. Turn It On. 38 special rock in the night. Changed our world. I mean, we were all about it, right? Look for the video on YouTube. Turn It On. Yeah, live. It's out there live. And then this happens. Wild. Wild-eyed boys. Wild-eyed boys. I, <laughs> you know, we're thinking, all right, you're going to follow up with what? It's another hit. It's another hit-laced album is what it is. I mean, the first song on it is Hold On Loosely. Give me a break. Now, this is the first song, even though uh, Rock of the Night was, was kind of a Don Barn song, this song right here kind of built the, um, what's the word, the image for Don Barnes songs coming down the road for the next three or four albums. This is the, um, the what's it called, not the outline, but the, um, the form for what was to come. I mean, uh, hold on loosely, a great song. Just a great song. Again, it's Don Barnes, you know. Um, we're, all, we're great artwork too, as well. <laughs> I, love, I love the artwork, I really, really do. I was going to tell you something about the record, but, um, I'm sorry, I have to put my glasses on because I'm old. Yeah, Wild Eyed Southern Boys. Oh, so that's exactly right. Jim Peterick wrote it by himself. That's what I thought. So Jim Peterick was a Chicago guy who um, became Don Barnes' collaborator on Songs Forever. But he wrote that song by himself. And he was in a band in the 60s called the... Um, man, it escapes me right now. 
Jim Peter, classic songwriter guy. He was in, he was also the guy who wrote uh, songs for Survivor. That's he right, founded right. Survivor, Survivor, right? So Jim Peterick was uh, amazing. I guess he's still around. Uh, songwriter and um, Eye of the Tiger guy. But somehow or another, Don Barnes hooks up with Jim Peterick. I'd like to know that story. And they start writing all these classic songs. I mean, um, Hold On Loosely. But then we got First Time Around, which is a Donnie Van Zant song, right? So good. So good. Uh, Fantasy Girl. We go back to the Jim Peterick, Don Barnes stuff. Um, I mean... What a great record. What a great cover. Back Out of the Sally kind of takes you back. Yeah. To the third album, I think. Because that feel from the third album. Yeah. Yeah. Just just a great record. Again, produced by Rodney Mills. We're going to keep moving forward here. We're not going to cover all 30 Special This is the beginning, okay? Um, this is the one that got 38 Special. Again, another great album cover. Right, <laughs> it's, um, seems to be a part of it. Yeah, this is the one that if you were in some small corner of the world and you still haven't heard "Rockin' in the Night" or "Wild Eyed Southern Boys" or anything like that, I guarantee you, you heard this record because the all-time number one song "Caught Up on You" still playing everywhere. Still a great song. I mean, the dynamics of the song are tremendous. The way it's produced, the way it's written. Again, it's a Don Barnes song. We're starting to slide into you know, the Don Barnes band, and what I call them. Because even it shows Donnie's starting to lose a little bit of frontman status, right? Look at this this record, though. Uh, Backdoor Stranger is a Donnie song. Back on track, Chain Lightning, Don Barnes song. Chain Lightning. I'm telling you, I am such a fan of that particular song. Roughhousing, a Donnie Van Zandt song that I think is terrific. Um, you Keep <laughs> Running Away, my favorite Don Barnes song ever. I mean, it's just absolutely fantastic. You keep running away. We're going to keep moving on down. Tour de Force. <laughs> this album has a, it's another album just loaded with, with hits. So it opens up with Don Barnes, Jim Peterick, If I'd Been the One. Just a classic. Then another one, Back Where You Belong. A hit. Yeah. Uh, one Time for Old Times. Again. Yeah. But... And and call me an idiot, okay? But I like Side 2 better. Why? Because it's Donny Van Zant at his finest. There's not many songs better than 20th Century Fox. <laughs> it the, is. It's definitely a great song. Yeah. Um, and, and this last one is with Undercover Lover. It's a great song. Donny Van Zant. I mean, I, I know that they had the feel in, in producers and record companies that Don Barnes songs were packaged for pop and they were broader appeal. But for us boys in the South, Donnie Van Zandt songs rock. It's what we, you know, it's what we thought about. 20th Century Fox, Undercover Lover. Thank you, Donnie Van Zandt. I saw that concert. It was an incredible concert. Kept the shirt for a long time. Strength in Numbers. Not so sure about this album. There may be a hit on it. I'm not sure. Strength in Numbers. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't know what to say about Strength in Numbers. Somebody like you, like No Other Night, got, got some play time. Um, Never Given Inches on it, which is a nice song. It, it was kind of the album, I think, that kind of started them into a, um, a... Who knows? Who knows why this happened? Not the greatest album, but after this, guess what happened? No more Don Barnes. Don Barnes leaves the band. And, again, I don't even want to think about it or talk about it or make any assumptions, but who in the hell got the idea to put Max Carl in the band? <laughs> Max Carl, I mean, incredibly talented guy. I would love to have him on the show and talk about stuff, but it, 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 it's... No longer 38 special. And the songs, the little Sheba, the, you know, just, this was not Southern Rock. And I, you know, I'm not sure much about Max Carl. Max Grodin chick's his real name, right? We had several different names for him. We, we don't know which one's right. <laughs> you know, we didn't like him very much. I No, it's not personal. <laughs> it's not personal at all because he's clearly talented. And I hope that the record company picked him because he could write these pop kind of Michael McDonald songs. It's just like Michael McDonald joining the Doobie Brothers. It made no sense to me. 
you know, get the hell out of the Doobie Brothers. You're not a real Doobie Brother. I mean, I mean, what a fool believes? No. You know, black, I mean, I, again, the band should change the name because it, it was 30 Special. Then it kind of was becoming the Don Barnes Band, but now Don's gone, and it's the Max Carl Band, and it just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, you know, Don eventually came back, and, and what, the late 90s, they did the, what was the Fade, the Fade to Blue, which I thought was a terrific song. But again, it, it's a Don Barnes Band song, and there was a, a Don Barnes solo project somewhere. It got released, but it's hard to find. I didn't ever get it. It's hard to find. Really? It, it's something out there. Who knows where? I didn't think it got released. I think it got released, but I think it probably got shelved very quickly. But during those years, you know, at the end of the, the Real 30 special, they kind of made Donnie into a Yeah, he was a circus prop. attraction. He's a circus attraction is what he was. Yeah, they had one show where they put him on a wire and he flew out across the audience while the band's playing a song and, you know, Don Barnes song. And you're just thinking, wow. Because in that video we talk about that that is uh, the, the opening act in 1980. You know, when the, the video we talked about uh, where they opened up with Turn It On first time around, watch that video. This is 30 special. It's the one we love and the one so great. But after that, you know, Don, Don Barnes got bigger. Donnie Van Zandt got smaller, even though I love Donnie Van Zandt. He I ended mean, up having a physical issue with his ears, too. Some, some, some serious ear damage, and he had, to, he had to back off yeah. physically. Maybe not emotionally, but physically he had to back off. Well, I have ear, ear damage as well. I mean, But it's a little bit worse than what we can imagine. I don't know. ACDC front row, 1978. It was bad. You did to yourself. Three, <laughs> three days. I heard nothing. Um, anyway, so we just wanted to drop thirty special on you because we love them, and and it's a part of the Skinner. You know, those musicians were mixing back and forth, and you know, Ronnie was so proud of Donnie, and I'm sure that when Donnie and Johnny got together for Brickyard Road, it, it made them happy, and Don, Ronnie looking down from above, you know, proud of his brothers. Um, the Van Sant duo, Johnny and Donnie, really nice. It was a really nice duo for them, too. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, give us your comments about 38 Special, your memories, things you saw, things you heard, questions of ours you can answer. Um, there's a lot more depth. And Joe was telling me it's like an encyclopedia of information out yeah, there on it's, 38. It's, it's a very, we're very lightly scraping the surface of yeah. 38 Special. Yeah. Joe's an expert on 38 Special. I, I just like the music. So anyway, until next time, we'll see you here on Skinner and Shorts. Anything else we want to talk about? Well, thanks for your patience and thanks for your input. Give us a comment because that's where all this stuff comes from and it's where it all happens. Um, until the next episode, we'll see you again on Skinner and Shorts.